Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to explain how to dynamically allocate a one-dimensional array. And so this is the program I've written to help explain that. And so in this program I dynamically allocate a one-dimensional array and I do a few more things as well. So let's go ahead and go through this program line by line and see how it works. So I've just included a couple libraries here. I'm using the standard namespace. The first thing I do in my program is I create this function prototype. And what I'm going to be doing with this function that I've named set all elem, elem is short for elements, is I'm going to pass in my dynamically allocated array. I'm going to pass in a value that I want to set the elements of that array to. And I'm going to pass in the length of that array. And so what this function is going to do is it will set all of my elements to whatever value I passed in, except for the first and last element. It will set those to something specific. So that's what this function is going to do. We'll define that a little bit later in this program. Then I jump to my main program. Here I'm passing in argc and argv. Argc is going to be the number of things that were on the command line when the program was run. And argv is is going to be an array full of C style strings that are going to represent the arguments on the command line as the program was run. And I have a video that explains what these are in some pretty good detail. So if you aren't sure what all that means, go ahead and check that video out. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. The next thing we do is we create this integer pointer. So this integer pointer is named dynamic array and it is capable of pointing to an integer. So what we're going to use this integer pointer for is we're going to point it to the front of our dynamically allocated array. Then we're going to enforce the proper usage of this executable when we compile the program and run it. We only want the user to pass in the name of the executable and the number of elements that the user wants the dynamically allocated array to be. So in this case, if our program was named foo and we wanted the dynamically allocated array to have 10 elements, we would run the program by typing in dot slash foo and then 10. And so that would be two arguments here. So if we had anything other than two, we're going to get this message explaining what the proper usage is. And this will be the name of the executable which if this doesn't make sense to you, go check out my video on int argc and char star argv. That'll explain how the name of the executable gets here and the number of elements. So if they don't enter the executable, the number of elements, they'll get this message and then we'll exit the main program by returning a one. So next here, we're going to grab argv1. This is going to be the second argument on the command line. So after the executable, we'll put a number that's going to show up here. But since we created argv as an array to hold character pointers, we actually have a C style string here and so we need to convert this value into an integer by using the a to i method so if we entered a 5 on the command line for the number of elements we wanted this would get converted to an integer and it would be stored in this integer variable that we created called num elements. Then we go ahead and we use our dynamic array, which is our integer pointer right here. And we're going to point it to a new array. And then the size of that array is going to be num elements, which is the number that we pass in on the command line. So at this point, our dynamic array is pointing to a newly created array of integers and it's going to be the size that we've specified when we run the program. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the elements to the value 7. Now I've actually created this function to set the first index to the value negative 1 and the last index to negative 10 and every other index is going to be a 7. We're going to pass in our dynamically allocated array, which is referenced by our integer pointer that we've named dynamic array. And then we're also going to pass in the size or the number of elements, which is this guy here that we get from argv1. Whatever we specify on the command line ends up here as the size of the dynamic array. And then once we set all the elements, we're going to print this message saying that we're printing a dynamically allocated array with, and this is going to be the size. This is the argument that we passed in when we ran the executable. So if we ran the executable with the value seven, it would say printing a dynamically allocated array with seven elements. Then we're going to run a for loop. So this is going to run through all of the elements in our array by starting at index zero 
and going up to one index less than the size. So for example, if we had a dynamically allocated array of five, so this would perform an action on indexes zero through four, which would be all five indexes. And for each of those indexes from zero to four, we're going to print the value of the index. So this is going to say index, and then whatever index number we're on, we'll just put a colon here, and then it will print the value that's stored inside that index. So this is just basically going to display what is contained inside of the dynamically allocated array after we've set all the values. Then we'll print one more line to the screen, and then we'll delete the array by saying delete open and close square bracket and then the name of the pointer that we're using to reference this array. Let's go ahead and look a little bit closer at what the set all elem function does. So here we're passing in an integer pointer reference. In our case, when we call the function, we pass in our pointer to our dynamically allocated array here. So since this is taking an integer pointer reference, that means that whatever we pass into this function, that's actually what's going to be manipulated with this variable. So this is actually manipulating the thing we pass into it. And since the thing we pass into it is pointing to our dynamically allocated array, this is going to manipulate the values of whatever dynamically allocated array we pass into it. At this step, dynamic array is now referenced by D underscore R, which also stands for dynamic for D and R for array. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the first index to negative one. That way we're just marking the beginning of the array with a unique value so we can see what that is. So starting at index one, index one would be the second element since the first element is index zero. And as long as our index is less than our length minus one, we're going to set that index to whatever value we passed in. So if we look up here, we're setting it to the number seven. So go back down here now. So the first element, element zero, is going to get set to negative one. All the rest are going to get set to seven, except for the last one, because length minus one, let's think about this. If we had a length of seven, length minus one would be six, but a seven element array is going to be indexed zero to six, right? So length minus one is six, as long as i is less than six, that means this will only happen when i is one, two, three, four, or five in that case, right? Five is going to be the sixth element if we had a seven index array. So we're going to set the first element to negative one, we're going to set all the other except for the last one to whatever we passed in here, which in our case is going to be a seven. And then the very last one, which is index length minus one, we're going to set that last one to negative 10. And this is all just gonna happen dynamically. No matter what size we put in here, it's just going to adjust to where the first one is a negative one, the last index is a negative 10, and everything else is value. And in our case, value we've passed in a seven. Okay, so now let's go ahead and compile this program and run the executable and see what happens. Okay, so I've got my terminal open here, and this guy is is inside of a folder named dynamic underscore array. And if I type ls, we can see that inside of that folder, I've got this dynamic underscore array.cpp file. And that's this file right here, dynamic underscore array.cpp. So let's go ahead and compile this file by typing g plus plus the name of the program, which I'll type d, y, and then I'll type a tab to autocomplete. I'll name the executable with a minus O flag and let's just name it DA, enter. So now if I type LS, we can now see that we not only have the C++ file we're looking at here, we also have a new executable called DA. So let me clear the screen real quick. And what happens if we just try to run the executable by saying dot slash and then the name of the executable, which is DA, we get this usage message here. So if we go back to here, that's what we would expect because we only have one thing on the command line, and the number of things on the command line is going to be stored in this argc. So one is not equal to two, therefore we get this message saying, hey, you need to run the executable, and then you also need to tell us the number of elements that you want this dynamic allocated array to be. Okay, so let's clear that again. And this time we'll run it the correct way, DA, and then we'll give it a value of five. Enter. So here it says we're printing a dynamically allocated array with five elements. And as you can see, the first element is a negative one, which is what we expect here. We're setting that first one to negative one. 
and then all the ones in the middle we're setting to seven, which is this value here, because we're passing that seven in here. So, so go back here, whatever that is set to gets stored right here. And then the very last element gets the negative 10 to mark the end. So here we have created a dynamically allocated array. We requested it to be size five. Here we can see it is size five and the five elements are stored in index zero, one, two, three, and four. That's five indexes. So if we wanted to, we could change these numbers a bit. So why don't we go ahead and here, instead of a seven, let's make this a 13. We will save that and then go back to our terminal here. Let me clear the screen. We'll have to recompile this now. So once again, G++, the name of the file with the code in it, and then minus O, and we want to name this DA. So now if I run dot slash DA, and let's do nine this time, we should get a dynamically allocated array with nine elements. The first one is going to be a negative one. The last element is going to be a negative 10 and everything in between should have the value 13. So let's push enter and let the program run. And here it says we're printing a dynamically allocated array with nine elements. Here we can see the first one, index zero, has the value negative one. All the rest have 13 and the last one has a negative 10. So that's how you do it, a dynamically allocated array. You start with a pointer to the type of the array and then you just make that pointer point to a new array of that type and you pass the size there. That's going to create the dynamically allocated array and the rest of this program is just doing some extra manipulation to kind of use the array. But yeah, that's pretty much how it works is create the pointer and then using the new keyword here, we can create an array of whatever type corresponds to our pointer. And you just create that to be whatever size you need. So let's clear this one more time. We could run this again, dot slash DA. This time we could do 100 if we wanted. This would dynamically allocate an array of 100. Push enter, let's scroll back up here. Here it says printing a dynamically allocated array with 100 elements. You can see the first one is set at negative one. That's index zero. And if we scroll down, we can see all the rest have that value 13 in them. And at the very end, our last one, our hundredth index is index 99. And we can see we've got the negative 10 that we've marked in the last place. So anyway, that's an introduction to how to create a dynamically allocated array. We simply just create a pointer to the array. This, in this case, we're creating a pointer of type int. So we can use it to point to an integer array. And then we simply use the new keyword and then we create an integer array of whatever size we request. Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Have an excellent day and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.